Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Healing Rise Up Atlanta. We're with Karen Mintz here once again. How are you doing today? Oh, wow. I can barely hear you. I hear some music in the background again. I don't know if that's you. Let me go go check. <laughs> that's okay. Well, welcome to the show. We are joined here by Karen Mintz, co-owner and manager. She's a health coach, a healer, and again, the name of her company is HealingRiseUpAtlanta.com, and that's the website, HealingRiseUpAtlanta.com. So welcome back to the show today. How are you? I'm doing great. And you? I'm doing well. Please say hello. Introduce yourself to our listeners today. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. My name is Karen Menz from HealingRiseUpAtlanta.com and Healing Rise Up Solutions, LLC. And what we do is we help mild to moderate pain. And we also help with your nutritional and detox needs um, of your whole whole body system. So um, I also am an author um, of Enjoying Life Against All Odds as a multiple traumatic brain injury survivor and how I am living and how I'm overcoming against all odds. So. Oh, well, thank you for being here. It's a, reminds me of a Phil Collins song. You know that song against all odds by Phil Collins and Genesis. (laughs) You coming back to me is against all odds, but it's true. It's beautiful song. Uh, Let's talk. Um, What did you want to share today with your audience and what's your platform today? Well, um, today I was just willing to be open. If anybody had any questions or anything like that, um, I'm open for that. Okay. So um, I'm more or less an open book. Um, If not, we can discuss uh, our our book, Enjoying Life Against All Odds, and Mm -hmm. how we can help people. And and if you have any questions with that, I can, you know, flow with that. Oh, Okay. okay. Well, first yes. of all, for people who don't know you, what your services, what you offer, let's just give yourself an introduction. I mean, I may know already or some listeners, but new people out there, let's talk about the work you do. Yes. Um, what I am is I'm a health coach and I also have um, a degree, a master's degree in um, mental health counseling. I am a retired veteran, so I'm well Grounded in all areas, and um, what we do is we help people um, to be able to overcome, you know, um, their their pain, um, to overcome their insecurities in life. Just everything, you know, the whole the whole picture, helping you become a whole. Because a lot of times we get caught up and we get stuck in certain areas. So that's what we help with. And we remove that blockage and um, together, because I don't do it alone, because you, the people have to do the work themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing, because everybody knows themselves better than I do. So that's what I do is I bring out the best in everybody. Um, to help them be who they're supposed to be in their journey here on this earth. So that's what I do. (laughs) That's the best way to describe it. I mean, I can say health coach, I did, 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 but the biggest thing is helping people internally and externally and helping them find themselves. And um, I re I more or less recommend people within their thirties to start taking care of their health. This is the time to take care of the health. I just, I called a friend yesterday. She is in her early fifties. She has heart issues, Mm -hmm. um, leakage um, in the heart, circulation issues. And I was trying to work on her in her forties to start taking care of her health. And she would do it, but consistency is the key to success of taking care of your health. Um, taking care of yourself, not only nutritionally, eating right, watching what you eat, read your labels, um, and then also relationships. Relationships are all essential. A lot of people are very needy, and what 
um, what I try to do is to help them find who they are so they don't have to be clinging to other people to be able to have their identity because God gave us an identity and just bringing that natural identity out and creating that person to be the beautiful person they are. Because sometimes what happens is um, when we're growing up, we get caught up in this uh, mindset, you know, because what we were brought up in, you know, a lot of people identity. Um, I think what we should do is discuss about our identity and who we are. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that God created us here on earth for a mission and we have a specific mission and each person has a special gift. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is finding that gift, that passion, that love, and being able to use it to help others. We're not here to be selfish because now it's like a me society. God, we weren't created on this earth to be me. And it's about me. We were created to help each other pull as we climb and to be able to nurture each other and to grow each other and to, um, love each other even in our mess because each person might have gone through an abuse and in that situation there's mental abuse there's physical abuse there's spiritual abuse because look at about the priests um doing things to young children um also emotional abuse also um being neglectful you know neglecting um and that can also be due to our upbringing or the situations that we experienced as a child going through school, through teachers, through peers. Um, everything is like a domino effect. It all affects how we are as a person and developing. And um, we don't have to be in that situation, we don't have to be like our parents. We don't have to be um, a victim. We need to rise up out of that victimization and to claim who we are and claim how we think and the processes that we go through. And then if we need to seek help, seek help, get counseling, go to a pastor, go to, um, somewhere where you can get help you know it, there is a lot of things out there for addictions I mean we've come a long way in helping our community and to heal you know and also sexual abuse and uh, rape domestic violence all these things there there is a network of support out there to help you to be able to heal and the biggest thing is taking care of yourself. And by taking care of yourself, that is taking care of yourself, not only nutritionally, but spiritually, mentally, physically, and- Emotionally, it's all the- <laughs> I'm trying to think of the other one, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you, emotionally, emotional. Because we are emotional beings. And we sometimes overthink, we misinterpret communication processes. So we have to, if you are offended, ask that person, what do you mean by that? You know, um, before you take offense, before you get angry, mm -hmm. um, it's important to be able um, to clarify what that person is saying because sometimes I know with my husband he's saying the same thing as me but we're saying it two different ways and then we start arguing about it mm -hmm. right <laughs> <laughs> which is ridiculous right we're both saying the same thing because he was brought up in New York I was brought up in Massachusetts and we all have different verbiage, different cultures, subcultures, and things like that. And to be able to identify and to clarify that. Um, so uh, communication can be our downfall. You know, we have to, when we're in a um, conversation, maybe 
one person speaks and then the other one clarifies Mm -hmm. and then they speak and the other person clarifies. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's how better communication is more effective because we need what the problem is. People jump to um, conclusions nowadays. We get too emotionally um, distraught, um, especially with this COVID. I mean, this COVID has isolated us. It has made some of us kind of mentally challenged in our yeah. situation. And um, we are so easily, easily um, set off. Um, and we have to, um, we have to look internally. And the only people we can change is ourselves. We have to look in the mirror and say, okay, all right, I got angered with that. I need to breathe and find out what's really going on. Because sometimes, um, I, you know, we we can be instantly angered and attack the person because mm-hmm. of what they said. Um, and sometimes, if they're saying things that are not right, more or less saying having boundaries. I really don't appreciate what you said. And I am not that. This is the type of person I am. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, clarifying, no, I'm sorry you feel that way, but no, you might be having a bad day, but your clarity about me is truly inappropriate. And I don't appreciate it. Sometimes we have to do that because that's yeah. how domestic yeah. violence starts, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody has a bad day, they come home, they beat the cat, you know, kick the dog, um, things like that. So we need to be able to um, control ourselves. And if we're having a bad day, um, maybe go to the gym, work off that anger that, you know, a punching bag running on the treadmill, um, going for a walk before you go into the door of your house. I think that's so essential. And I remember hearing a story, this, this guy, he would like before going into his house and into where his family was, he would go out, put his hand on the tree and just pray and let Grounded. go of mm-hmm. all that stuff that poor tree Grounded, accumulated yeah. a lot of <laughs> negativity <laughs> but, but, it when he, but yes but when he came back into the house he was free and he was mm-hmm. able to be present with his family and finding ways mm-hmm. to be able to um that work for you Mm-hmm. Now, the biggest thing is finding things that work for you. Like road rage is a big thing nowadays, you know, like flipping everybody off. And you're going to be careful because some areas they'll, they'll pull out a gun. And, you know, we have to um, be very cognitive of our own True. reflection of somebody else. Um, my biggest thing is when I tell my husband, um, we have to be. Um, proactive to everybody's driving right Mm -hmm. we have to be cognitive of our surroundings true very true Mm because we don't you know somebody else might be drifting off they might have a tiring day they might sway into your your lane and you're gonna flip them off while you're gonna be upset and like it's so negative horrible but yes it happens So a lot of times what a lot of people, some people do is they'll put on relaxing music. I put on Christian music or, you know, right now I have holiday music on and that makes me happy and joyful. So put something on that relaxes you as you drive home, because I know here in Atlanta, there's traffic. So you have to find ways to relax and to just chill in your own environment your own you meditation know. uh i believe in um i'm not too meditation if you can meditate i meditate on scripture what i do is i say the scripture over and over again and what we do is i put an index card on my vehicle windshield or 
you know, and I'll have a scripture of that day. And I will, if I'm in traffic, I will look at that scripture and I will then meditate on that scripture. Also um, having positive affirmations in your vehicle too, you know, post, post positive affirmation. This is a beautiful day. This is the day that God has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. You know, things like that to help you be able to control the road rage because you can't control others. You can only control you and and just being able to be calm in your own environment. So that's essential. But yes, um, you know, um, Different people have different things that work for them. I personally just meditate on scripture, put in my Christian music and, you know, God. And then what I also do is before I get in the vehicle, I'll pray. Mm. Dear God, I lift up this vehicle, have giant warrior angels protect my vehicle as I drive, have traveling mercies going to and fro and thank you jesus thank you heavenly father thank you holy spirit for protecting me that's another alternative too that's what i i do on long journeys when i travel and it really works and praying before you get in your vehicle um praying before you get into your home into your your environment where you're supposed to feel safe yeah so, um, I believe that, uh, if we work on ourselves, we can, um, shine for the other people around us because it will be like, you know, how negative negativity, if everybody clicks onto that negativity, everybody like starts talking bad about the boss, right? Well, guess what? If somebody's talking bad about the boss, throw in something good about the boss. You know what I mean? You know, throw, put a, um, a silent, just to shock people, you yeah. know, yeah, shock people, throw in positivity and see little by little each time people start wow. talking and gossiping about people. Well, guess what? I think this person is really awesome. I love the way they dress. They're hard worker. That'd be so They're- nice. Yeah. You never hear anyone positive talking people. Uh, that's a yeah. smart thing. You know, holidays, we're going to be around our family, our friends gathering. And you know what? I don't think I've ever really heard anyone in my family do positive talk. It's all, oh, well, she said this and she did that. My mom's cousins. Mm-hmm. And it's like the neighbor, can you believe? And it's, why can't we positive talk? What about the good? This is a great, simple point. Great activity for all of us around the holidays the next uh, week or two. Yeah. Yes, especially when you're going over um, to relatives, you know, even um, a mother-in-law, um, sister-in-law, or a brother that you just don't get along with, um, because of sibling rivalry, there is, so what you just do is you drop a bomb on them and just say, hey, you know, I love you, and I love what you're doing, you know, and um, I'm, you know, just just do something positive, you know, Um, and uh, thank you for coming, you know, thank you for brightening my day for being here. It is awesome. I love family and you guys are here and I love you. And I am so blessed to have each and every one of you. You're beautifully made and I love you. And thank God for you being in my life. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Thankful. Be thankful. Be grateful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also those people that are having a hard time at job uh, in jobs. And I know it's difficult because I worked in a hostile work environment for five years, but each day I got up and went to work, but I read scripture every day when I went there and I had a little pocket um, Bible mm-hmm. and I would go in and I would take certain scriptures out and I, I would meditate on those scriptures to get through the day within this environment because no matter what they said, you know, um, I was never going to do enough. So what you yeah. do is you have to, if I was able to do that again, um, 
I would have somehow maybe spoken to them and, and um, you know, thank you for helping me during this duration, or um, I don't know how I would have done things differently in a hostile work environment. Because sometimes when you're in that environment, you need somebody from the outside that will speak into you and through you to get you through that situation. And sometimes that has to be somebody that will be positive. And you have, that's another thing. I, I believe you need to surround yourself with a support system, people that will believe in you, that won't gossip about you, that will be loyal, that has great boundaries. And, you know, they, they'll know, okay, I need to back off, you know, uh, or they know when you know, to step in and to, um, to help you because we're here to help each other and a good team of friends. I call them a crew because I, that 100, I love that, <laughs> you know, the crew, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I, we're, I'm always in those uh, weird um, things, but I like the crew. A crew is tightly knit. Even though you have rivalry in there, you're still have each other's back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the biggest thing, creating a crew that will get you through thick and thin and um, where they won't gossip about you, won't make, won't um, spread what you just said to them, to other people. And that's hard because a lot of, um, a lot of people do that. Um, That's why I think when I was up North, I had a lot of friends because they would dump a lot of stuff on me and I wouldn't say anything to anybody. They could trust me. You know, and, you know, um, having those friends that that will just be a good listener because, you you know, it's so important. And also for you too, uh, you know, open the eyes of your heart and to listen and to speak positive things into people as they are going through trials and tribulations. Sometimes they just need somebody to listen to and then you can pray over them, you know, and, you know, whatever that needs to be done because yeah. we just start becoming yeah. that tight knit community again. I remember when I was growing up, if we were sick, somebody brought over soup or, or if we were new in the neighborhood, somebody would bring over banana bread or something, a basket of all these wonderful goodies, you know, we need to get back and yeah. um, become selfless and dying to ourselves. That's my favorite saying. We need to die right. to ourselves yeah. and, so, wow. um, and open up to the community. Because I know people have, with this COVID, we have become so isolated and so self-oriented. Now we need to overcome that and realize we, you're not alone. And everybody else is not alone. True. It's us that need to come together. And that's why I love my church. It's a good community. We help each other. I mean, there was a time that Paul and I needed help. And he was, um, I don't know, it was before Trump got into office. And they had a shutdown, government shutdown. And money, money yep. was um, hard. And the church gave us funds to get through that hard time. And, um, and then because they did that, we were able to help others in the future. You know what I mean? So usually finding a good church that will nurture you because some um, just finding Church hopping is the best thing. Finding what you feel is comfortable. Is fit. Your yep. skin. Whatever you believe in, yep. But to belong to something, to have people that are positive, who believe, who are kind, who are, you know, mm-hmm. share the and same value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody within our church is just so friendly. We hear so many wonderful things because we help the underdog. Mm-hmm. We don't help the Pharisees, the high and mighty people we help the underdog the people that need help the people with addictions the people that are abused the people with sexual on uh, sex trafficking you know all these things we help even the oh. homeless 
-hmm. and the people that don't have food right now. And that is the biggest thing is we need to get back to basics and to do that in our community. And that's where the church comes in. And believe it or not, we have a heart. And you got to remember the church is a hospital. That's where we have a lot of people that are hurting spiritually, okay? We're not perfect. Then We're not Christ. We're not Jesus's yet. When we die, we have made it. We've been yep. sanctified, okay? But when you go, to, go into a church, it's a place where you grow spiritually from inch to inch, from level to level, from glory to glory. Because everybody in the church is at a different level at a different time, a different space. Mm -hmm. And there was one story I remembered. Um, this one kid or guy or whatever said, you know, this person's gossiping. This person's on the phone all the time while you're preaching. Mm -hmm. He went to the pastor and said, well, and did that. He says, get a glass of water, fill it and walk around the whole church two times. And then he says, okay, what did you get out of this yeah did you hear people gossiping did you hear people um did you see people on the phone you know all these other things and what he says is that glass of water is your relationship with god your relationship with jesus your relationship with trinity god. and it's about you you know because we could be so fixed on everything around us that we're not getting what we're supposed to when we go to church, right? So it's our relationship with God. It's not about everybody else's relationship. That's a busybody, you know? That's somebody that um, is uh, just not content with themselves, but being content with yourself is a gradual process. That's where you have to work on yourself and all aspects. Like we mentioned before, relationship, career, yep. exercise, and spirituality. And that makes us whole and oneness. And working on ourselves in each and every area is essential. Got it. Uh, wow. Well, at this time, unfortunately, Karen, we are out of time. Could you tell our listeners how we can reach out to you? What's the best form of contact? Yes. Um, you can reach me at 678-545-2674 or go on to healingriseupatlanta.com and, you know, plug in, look in, um, send me any messages that you would like. And again, healingriseupatlanta.com. Got it. And on social media at all? Yes, it's Healing Rise Up. And I haven't truthfully been working on that too much. Um, because I've been focused on healing right now. And sometimes we have to take a break. Um, I think uh, as I was praying, I know it might sound a little bit weird, but God says, rest my child. So that's what I'm doing is I'm resting and I'm resting in him, reading scriptures, reading books, and just relaxing and just taking care of my health. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Got it. Perfect. Well, thank you for being here. And again, Karen's uh, healing rise up atlanta.com. Now you're based out of Georgia, but clearly you work with people virtually everywhere around the world. And we want to thank you for being here yes. and enlightening us. Put that music back on, go enjoy yourselves, go talk, talk to your husband, take the call. And thank you again. Happy holidays to you and uh, Merry Christmas. Happy new year. Happy Hanukkah, all the above. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Whatever Have you believe in holiday everyone. season. Yes, God bless. Thank God you. bless. God bless. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. 
Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.